northwest of Aspen at my buddy Ryan's and Anda's house. I've been sleeping on the couch and eating a lot of food. Tomorrow, taking off, heading north to Carbondale and then southwest on 133 to Delta. I never in a million years imagined it would be this special to bicycle tour across the country and see all I've seen and all I'm gonna see because I'm just getting started at this. After a few days off the bike resting way too much at my friends, I keep an eye on the incoming weather and realize that I need to get back on the road. Another cold friend is on his way and I still have to get over the western half of the Rocky Mountains before heading south towards California. Even though there is more overall descending to do from now on, I still have to go over three legit passes to get to Utah. The first one is McClure Pass at 8,381 feet in elevation. Even though this pass is not that high relative to what I've already done these last weeks, it's known for having one of the steepest grades in Colorado at an average of 6.6%, with the steepest section at 8.2. Back to it! To get over my Clure Pass, I first need to get to the town of Redstone by day's end, about 42 miles away. I'm back to it! What a bunch of great days I spent at Ryan and on this place. It was a great time for me to rest, but right now we have a gorgeous descent, so I'm gonna zip on down. To get to Redstone, I first need to ride on Colorado Highway 82 for a few miles before jumping on the Rio Grande Trail to reach the city of Carbondale. This highway had a wide enough but dirty shoulder with semi-busy traffic flow. Along 82 is the Roaring Fork River, a tributary of the Colorado River running 70 miles, draining Aspen's all-important Roaring Fork Valley. I'm nine miles in, it's a low grade downhill. Maybe not even so low grade. It's, uh, Zipping me at 18, 19 miles an hour without much effort. I'm heading to Carbondale. I should be there in another 13 miles where I'll be taking 133. In no time I see an entrance to the Rio Grande Trail, so I get on it and start riding easy low grade descending miles all the way to Carbondale. This 42 mile rail trail running from Glenwood Springs to Aspen follows what was formerly the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. Known for crossing through the Colorado Rockies instead of around them, including going over Tennessee Pass at 10,240 feet in elevation back in 1887. With cottonwood trees in full fall glory and the sound of the river to my right, I can't help but to ride on with a smile on my face as if life can't get any better. Once in Carbondale, I look for the fastest way to get to the southwest bound Colorado Highway 133 towards the town of Redstone where I get my first glance at Mount Sopras at 12,965 feet in elevation. Got myself another bike path. I like it. What a mellow day. And I don't know how far I'll go today. I might just uh, get to Redstone and another 15 miles and call it quits and find a place to camp. I was pleasantly surprised by this Crystal Valley Trail not having a clue it was actually there. Man, is it nice to live in this part of Colorado. For the most part, you're either riding on a white shoulder on a scenic highway, on a well-maintained trail, or climbing one of its amazing passes. 
What a beautiful day. Easy. Easy peasy day. This short six and a half mile Crystal Valley trail runs from Carbondale to the base of Mount Sapris near the entrance to White River National Forest. So I jump on Highway 133 on a marginal shoulder and continue with the spectacular scenery. About five miles from uh, Redstone, where I'm gonna stop. It'll be a short day, but a good start for my uh, next uh, stretch into Utah. I ride a few miles short of the town of Redstone with plenty of daylight left, so I decide to stop and check out Crystal River up close. I leave my bike on a rock and walk down to the river, contemplating whether to go to Redstone to get some food, and then return to camp somewhere around here later on. But my plan soon would change when I meet up with Gina and other welcoming residents of Redstone. To Redstone, I'm gonna spend the night here somewhere. It's a 40 mile day, which is not a big deal, but a big deal enough as I was uh, off the bike for a while. There's these interesting oven things here on the side. I gotta check it out. At the turn of the century, these coke ovens turned coal mined above Redstone into pure carbon, which was then shipped to steel mills. This coke, along with limestone and iron ore, were dumped into blast furnaces to create the steel that made the trains, steel rail, and barbed wire that made it possible to settle the west. As soon as I get into Redstone and its general store, I meet up with several locals and ask if I can camp somewhere. The lady managing the store, Gina, was quick to tell me to camp in the backyard of the general store and being tired enough not to want to backtrack, I decided to take her up on her offer. I don't know how I get lucky like this sometimes. Came into a red stone. I'm really tired. All those days off kind of got to me, I guess. And um, the, the campground is way to the east, and I passed it coming here, but I needed to come here to get some food. I started asking around and see if I could put my tent somewhere, like in uh, by the river, and the lady that I asked, runs a general store in town. I can't thank you enough. Well, it's a pleasure. She said to just camp back here. And then she brings me this insane organic vegetable soup with what, bread. What's in that vegetable soup? Uh, we had a little cabbage, a little carrots, potatoes, all grown down the street. It's just what I needed today. Mm. I don't know, sometime here at Redstone, general store. Uh, Gina, who's running it, just was so sweet. She made me a great breakfast and a soup last night and just a wonderful time meeting all kinds of different people. It's such a beautiful community here. It's not gonna be easy to get on the road right off the bat this morning, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, last night was superb sleep back on my tent. I'm gonna do everything I can to stay camping from now on. I've 
missed it for all the days I haven't been uh, sleeping in my tent. So anyways, pack up and 60 miles to Delta. Let's go. Going to Delta. Wow. Over Where the pass. Your whole, what's your whole trip? Uh, from, I started in Boston. Oh wow. Over three months ago. Oh, wow. How much is your bike ride? When it's fully loaded. Uh, like 80 to 100 pounds. <laughs> a lot of it is uh, equipment, like filming equipment. This is all my stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's, who's your children? Here? I'm going to eat that one. This guy's a hoot. I can tell already. <laughs> He's fun. He's a blast. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Anna. Anna? Yeah. Diego. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I finished packing up my tent and rest of my camp after chatting it up with Anna before going to the front of the store where I met up with her husband Peter. He starts telling me about his eco-friendly plant-based wax and lubricant company Mountain Flow based out of Carbondale. They make products such as chain loops and grease, different types of wax for snow skis, and many yeah. other biodegradable products for the bike and snow industry. I uh, actually run a, a company that makes bike lube. Bike lube? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's called Mountain Flow. Plant-based. Yeah. I'm going down Okay, I'll be right there, buddy. That sounds interesting. Yeah, we're based at a Carbondale, um, but we sell it everywhere. Yeah. Okay, buddy, let's go do it. Well, yeah, it's called Mountain Flow. Check it out if you. I will. It's in, you know, REI. Oh, and, if I see it, I'll, I'll get it. Well, nice, nice to meet nice you. Chef. What was your name? Diego. Diego. I'm Peter. Peter. Yeah. See you, buddy. You're a cutie. You say nice to meet you? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> you, you too, man. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Oh. It was a pleasure to meet you. And you Hang too. Okay. Oh my gosh. Happy trails with yeah, our members. Awesome. The magic word. Just walk in and say manja. Manja. You're so sweet. Yeah. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done. You got this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Here I go, weather's turning. Might be a more difficult day than I was thinking. I'm getting a late start and it's Gina's fault back there. She would not stop putting stuff in my bags like food. I got tacos and juices and <laughs> it's like frozen uh, soup from last night. Anyways, uh, 20 miles to start climbing. I have the wind in my face the whole way there and all the way to Delta. Back on the road. I slept like 11 hours last night. I needed it. And I also was fortunate to have the human interaction with uh, multiple people that uh, fueled me up too. This is not gonna be an easy day, I can tell you already. Legit headwinds coming out of the west, prefrontal, and I'm heading west. Thankfully, the pass is gonna give me a lead, and then it'll be a downhill for a while with a heavy wind in my face. scenery this valley is just a insane 17 miles on this crystal river valley later and i'm face to face with chair mountain and the entrance gate to mcclure pass i had no idea because i didn't look it up but this pass has an average grading of 6.6 percent for the three miles to the summit I was about to get a quick reminder of steep climbs reminiscent of the Appalachian mountain range except at a significantly higher altitude. By now I'm all warmed up and ready for the task at hand looking forward to what scenery I'll be gifted with from above. Going up! 
I'm halfway there. It's not that big a climb, like three miles. And I'm like a mile in. Let's keep going. What this pass doesn't have in length, it has in uh, steepness. It's legit steep. Awesome views. I'm almost there. Easy peasy. One little pedal at a time. Almost there. One more turn. Woo! Love it. That should do it. That wasn't bad at all. It was steep, but not very uh, long. 100% manageable, considering all the other passes. It was uh, entertaining and, and also difficult, but entertaining more. Let's do it. Downhill to, uh, where am I going? Delta? Yeah, Delta. <laughs> it's still like 50 miles away. I'm gonna bundle up and head down. Here I go once again on another Colorado downhill ride looking to take in over 3,000 feet of descent with whatever magical views, turns and straight runs they will give me as fast as my bike can possibly take me. It's only about 11, 12 miles into my day of 60 miles to get to uh, Delta. A lot of work left to do, but a lot more downhill, just more uh, gentle. The westbound side of McClure passes the west side of Chair Mountain sitting to the east of Ragged Peak. And just a few miles later on looking towards the south, one can spot West Beckwith Peak. I'm struggling with uh, headwinds coming straight out of the west where I'm heading. I see the leaves tumbling towards me all day. What a pass. This downhill has got different scenery every turn from rock cliffs to mountain views and now pines. Outstanding. I keep descending and reach the Pioneer Reservoir, which soon after becomes the North Fork Gunnison River. Suddenly I start seeing more fall colored cottonwood trees and some aspens still holding on to their fall leaves. The scenery is outrageous. The lower I get in elevation, the more of these aspen trees that are still holding on to their fall leaves. It's absolutely gorgeous especially in the distance when you look at the mountains and they're full of pine trees and sprinkled throughout are the yellow aspens just uh, outstanding scenery I feel some uh, rain coming on me and I see it I got about 
14 miles to Peonia where I could uh, stop if I need to. Delta is another 25 miles beyond that. Next is the coal mining town of Somerset, taking about two minutes to get through and soon after I was back riding on a sea of yellow trying my best to take in all of this unforgettable afternoon. Life can't quite get better than this, but for good measure I think I'll keep riding along in search of what else might be around the next bend of the road. Well that was Somerset and uh, it looks like the rain held out, so I'm gonna try to make it to Peonia. What a day! I feel like all I see is yellow. Beautiful. Surprisingly beautiful. I wasn't expecting the colors to be so vibrant. Uh, I've just enjoyed today tr like tremendously, except for the headwind. It was choking me the whole way down, but thankfully it came when I was on a downhill. And I'm getting into Peonia here. I gotta decide if I wanna keep going at four o'clock in the afternoon and do another 23 miles or um, or see if I can stay here somewhere. I hear it's pretty cool. So.